you've got to see the future finished in advance. You've got to put in the long hours and put up with the setbacks and the disappointments. You've got to learn to enjoy the process of disciplines and of putting yourself through the paces of doing the uncomfortable until it becomes comfortable. You've got to be prepared and willing to attack the challenges if you want the success because challenges are part of success. Now that may sound like a full menu of activities, but let me assure you that the process of going from average to fortune isn't really all that difficult. Thinking about it is the difficult part. Anticipating all the effort and the changes and the disciplines is far worse in the mind than in reality. I can promise you that the challenges you'll meet on the road to success are far less difficult to deal with than the struggles and the disappointments that come from being average. Confronting and overcoming challenges is an exhilarating experience. The key to development is to be all that you can possibly be. I don't know what your talents are. I don't know what your skills are, but here's what I probably am right on, that you're behind on an accelerated effort toward your full development. I would suggest that. Now, for some of you, I know that's probably really not true. But even as I look at my own life, because, you know, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to procrastinate just like everybody else. You know, I should have written 30 books by now. I've only written four or five. You know, I should have done a lot of things, but I haven't. You know, I got distracted and all of us, you know, have these challenges. But what could I become? What could I become? I had one of my dearest friends. I've lost him. He died at age 53. One day, and, and he drank a little too much. David drank a little too much, but he, but he did all kinds of things. He was a builder, and he was a dreamer, and he did a lot of things. But his, his drinking sort of kept him in a fog for like years and years. About six years ago, he was sitting at the yacht club. And he was in a fog and suddenly it occurred to him, I wonder what I could have accomplished all these years if I hadn't have been in this sort of foggy state. And he said that did it. And the last six years before he died, he was free. And he accomplished some incredible things that last six years. Being all that you can be and not let habits drag you down not let things, you know, sidetrack you from the full development of what you have the capable of being. Uh, what, what all could your heart encompass if you really had the chance and you really had the disciplines and, and really got to it? What could you really become? What could you earn? How healthy could you really be? How many books could you write? How many poems could you write? So here's what I would ask of you. If you feel that you're a little bit stalled wherever you are in your progress, I'm asking you to correct that. I'm asking you to see if you can't possibly be on a more accelerated track toward your possibilities and your full development. Here's what life is all about, to become all that we can possibly be. Uh, the full development of all of your potential, that's number one. Number two is the wise use of all of your resources. That's what life is all about, full development. We're all aware that many people feel that we must be careful of focusing on money or affluence or abundance. That in it or in the pursuit of it, there is danger. We often hear quoted from the Bible, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I do agree. If you make money your love and you pursue affluence to the exclusion of or at the expense of other values of life, you have lost, not won. However, let us consider this question. If you could do better, should you? That's not a bad question. In the time allotted to labor, in the time given to economics, care for family, success, achievement, productivity, the creation of value, the development of skills and creativity, if you could do better, should you? I think that one of the greatest satisfactions of living life to the fullest is doing the best you can with whatever you have, doing less than your best has ways of eroding the psyche. We seem to be creatures of enterprise. Surely it is the reason for the seasons. The soil and the sun and the rain and the seed all say, what can you do with us? The seasons say, 
Do you have the genius to make something unique of us? Life says, here's the raw material. What splendid things can you produce from all there is? So, go for high productivity. The full employment of your genius. The full development of your potential in all areas of your life, including earning money. That is the essence of life. Make this note. None of us lack the capacity. None of us lack the capacity. We have far more capacity than we have time to take advantage of. I do read a record where it says all that time ago, some people lived to be 700 years, 800 years, 900 years old. I feel a little shortchanged when I only had the chance maybe to live 70, 80, 90, 100 years. When all that time ago, the record says, some lived to be 700, 800, 900 years. It seems like it would take seven or eight or 900 years to tap the full extent of our capacity, let alone 70, 80, 90, 100 years. But here's what I'm asking you to do. Get busy. You've got more brain power than you've used so far. You've got more potential than you've used so far. You've got more strength than you've possibly used so far. No telling how many languages you can learn. No telling how far you can go. No telling how strong you can get until you get busy working on yourself and see if you can't tap all of your full potential. People might have put you down in the past. I'm telling you, those days are over. People that have told you you're too short. People that have told you you're too tall. You're too old. You're too young. I'm telling you, the old idea about your limitations of the past, those days are gone forever. Mr. Shop only went to the eighth grade in school, so he put things in very simple language. He said, Mr. Owen, if you're 25 years old and you're an American male and you've been to high school and one year of college and you're not at least a third of your way towards your fortune, he said, isn't something wrong? Now, see, I'd never looked at it like that before. As being wrong, he said, something's wrong. And there's, he said, there's nothing wrong with the country and nothing wrong with the companies and there's nothing wrong with the banks and the money, but there's something wrong with your plan. There's nothing wrong with you, but there's something wrong with your thinking, something wrong with your plan. You bought the wrong story. You brought the wrong formula. And it's easy to wind up a nice person and broke. It's easy to wind up sincere and poor. I'm telling you, you can be sincere and poor, and you can work hard and be poor if you buy the wrong formula, buy the wrong plan. You didn't add up the percentages. You never took out the calculator. You never counted the cost, as an ancient phrase says. Now, see, that kind of blunt, straight language really helped to uncover where my problem lies. Let me give you one of the most clear formulas he gave me that helped to change my life. We deal in what we call basics in one of my lectures. Basics, fundamentals. And there's just a few fundamentals. And there aren't any new fundamentals. You've got to beware of somebody who says, I got a new fundamentals. And no, fundamentals are old. Here's one of the greatest of basics and fundamentals. It comes from an ancient Bible phrase. Here's what it says. Whatever you sow, you will reap. We call it simply the law of sowing and reaping. Right? Simply put, the law of sowing and reaping. Now then, Mr. Shove said to me, Mr. Owen, there's another way to quote this law that may very well help to discover where the problem lies. I said, okay, I'm ready. Here's what he said. It's also quoted like this. Whatever you reap is what you've sown. I thought, wow, I never thought about that. Now there went my list of all the things I blame for my current circumstances. If you don't like the crop, who do you look up? Answer, whoever planted it. And where do you find who planted your crop? Answer, in the mirror. That's where you go come fall, come harvest time. You go to the mirror. And if necessary, you say, a few skinny carrots? I got to be unimpressed. Where were you last spring? Asleep. Didn't you read the books? Did you break your hoe? This is talking straight. This is telling it like it is. I asked the question last night, am I reading enough books or am I not? If I engage in my current financial practices, will it take me toward the fortune I would wish for in the next 10 years or will it not? If I keep up my current health practices, 
Will I have the vitality and the health and the vigor to do all the things I want to do five years from now? Will I or won't I? Are my current practices taking me where I would really like to go or have I been kidding myself for quite some time? I had a day just before I met Mr. Shove called Do Not Kid Myself Anymore Day. Here's where I am after 25 years. Here's what I've got. There's no use Mickey Mousing with the numbers. There's no use trying to stretch it. There's no use trying to excuse it. There's no use trying to paint it some phony color. Let's tell it like it is. Because it's the truth that starts the freedom mechanism working. It's the truth that starts to relieve the mind of all the guilt and all the excuses and get right down to where it is. When I finally discovered that the government wasn't my problem and that prices weren't my problem and that it wasn't the company and it wasn't company policy and it wasn't my negative relatives and it wasn't the weather and it wasn't the economy and it wasn't the community, when I finally discovered it was me, we call that trauma. Now, after I had passed through the trauma of discovering that it was me and not all the other things I'd blamed all those years, when I finally went through the trauma, now suddenly it dawned on me, hey, if it's me, I can do something about that right away. And then I started getting excited after my trauma had passed. The only change that is really going to dramatically affect your life is you. Mr. Shove said to me, Mr. Owen, if it isn't going well for you, you don't say what's wrong out there. You say what's wrong in here. There's a black heritage spiritual that says it's not my mother nor my father. It's not my brother nor my sister. It's me. What a revelation. But once you find out it's you, that's something you can go to work on this very day. You can start to make a new stretch today. You can start reading some new books today. You can sign up for some new classes today. You can start engaging in constructive thinking today. You can make some life-changing decisions today. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after this evening, only by choice. Now, this is called dealing in straight talk. See, I used to blame everything outside. And then let me give you a little philosophy that helped turn my life around. For your notes, here it is. It's not what happens. that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. So that's a key phrase. It's not what happens, it's what you do. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parentheses here. Same. What people do, that's what's different. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Everybody's had their share. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now, see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. <laughs> and see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five, unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. 
So if I had a word with you tonight, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me, I think my personal advice to you would be, this year, 1981, reach down inside of you and come up with some more of those remarkable human gifts. They're there, waiting to be utilized. And then change anything for you you want to change. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. If you don't like how it is for you, change it. If it doesn't suit you, change it. If it doesn't please you, change it. If it isn't enough, change it. And I challenge you to do that because you can change. See, you don't ever have to be the same again after tonight, only by choice.